Thanks. How's it going? What's your name, man? It's Max. Max. My name is Mohammed. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, you're Canadian, yeah? Yeah. What's oh, no, the... We lost the other guy. Yeah, that, I don't know where he went. Right. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Is that... yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, right. Sorry, my friend. Yes. He wants us to stop. You know, just yeah, yeah, cool. no problem. You can go like against the bench, do you want? No, no, no. Right. I don't like going against the bench. <laughs> So yeah. are you here for like a, are you a tourist here or? Yeah, pretty much. I just wandered by. Yeah, yeah. And so your what's your theological like? What are you theologically convinced with? You well, atheist. I would say agnostic, I guess, because I've had atheist earlier, but then some guys caught me in a logic trap, so agnostic fits better. <laughs> no, but it's a humble position, agnosticism, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, yeah. fair enough. No, I mean, it's good that I'm talking to you about this because what, what I wanted to say first and foremost is let's let's ask the overall question, yeah. yeah. Before we talk about human beings, I heard you talking about like kind of evolutionary type things with uh, the other gentleman, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But generally, I wanted to ask you, like, how do you explain us being here? How did the universe come into existence? The most truthful answer I can give is that we don't have concrete evidence of any given means of creation of our universe. Yet. Let me ask you a better question. Okay. Max, yeah? Yeah. This is the thing. This seriously, yeah? All right. Whenever I speak to atheists, it always boils, obviously, and rightfully so, down to the evidence, doesn't it? Yeah? yeah. Okay. What is your truth standard? What for you is sufficient evidence? Generally speaking, in order for you to accept a thing. In order for me to accept something as likely true, because I think if you have a, a truthful scientific view of the world, you'll never accept anything as 100% concretely true, right? Like we've printed hundreds of thousands of books and every single time we do it, we apply ink to a letter and we press that letter into the page. Yeah. And so we print a word there. It is possible the one time when we apply ink to a letter and press it into a page, the book will spontaneously combust. I haven't seen it yet, you haven't seen it yet, but we can't say with 100% certainty that it couldn't happen, right? So yes, yes. what I'm operating from is a, a probabilistic basis. Yeah, so what I would accept as truth would be a body of research or evidence or a conversation that strongly suggests something. For instance, like, you know, we believe that aircraft will fly every time we apply a given amount of thrust oh. to a wing with a given shape because we've tested that hundreds of thousands of times and every single time the aircraft takes off. It's possible that it won't one time, but the body of evidence suggests that it will. Okay, I like that. Right. I agree with that. Okay. Yes? Yep. So in short, what you're saying is you, you accept a, what's ref, what you could say is a probabilistic type reasoning, yeah? Yeah. So like, based on likelihood, mm -hmm. you assess whether a thing is true or false, generally speaking. Likely or unlikely, I would Yeah, say. likely or unlikely, and obviously yeah. that varies in proportions depending on what you're talking about, yeah? Generally speaking, depending on the size of the uh, sample for evidence, right? Okay. So one experiment is a pretty weak proof. 100,000 experiments, fairly strong. That's, that's, I agree with that, yeah? Very good. Now, let's apply this logic, because here what you've said is that I, I, you, you accept a probabilistic type reasoning, yeah? Yeah. Let's apply this to the universe and its construction or its creation or whatever you want to call it, yeah, or its inception. My standard question to you would be then, how did the universe come into existence? What's your answer for that, first of all? My answer is that we're still working on finding the truth of that okay. and that it's very difficult for us to find an absolute truth given the time scale that it occurred on. We have some theories that are looking increasingly likely, but we don't have an absolute answer. However, I don't believe the theists do either. Okay, thank you. Now, you said you agree with the probabilistic type of reasoning, yeah? Yeah. Do you accept that the universe is finely tuned? Finely tuned? And let me define what I, I mean by let me define what I mean by finely tuned, yeah? Okay. What I mean by finely tuned is that the variables or the constants in terms of physics yeah. are set in such a way as to allow any l life to exist. This is my definition of finely tuned. Okay, now I would refute that by saying that on most planets that we've observed directly, because there are a lot that No, we but I'm not talking like... about planets, I'm talking about the universe generally. Yeah, okay, so yeah. the universe generally is empty space. After that, it's ultra hot gas giants, it's black holes, it's stars. Yeah, so all of the like, all of the constant uh, yes. An incomprehensibly small portion of it is suitable for some life. That's a far cry from finely tuned for life to exist. No, that's not correct because you can the the question of whether life is fit to exist in the universe is that as a dichotomous question. So it's either yes or no. So I would ask you: Is the universe f uh, tuned or finely tuned for any life to exist in it? You would answer by saying yes or no. And if you say no, you have to substantiate that in the light of the evidences. No, no. Because if there's any kind of life that exists in the universe, no matter how small or insignificant in your eyes, that disproves your thesis. Do you understand the point? Uh, 
I don't believe that to be true, but for the sake of continuing this discussion, I'll accept that a portion no, but, of the universe is a good location for life. No, but occur. let's not just for the sake of this argument, because yeah. what you've done here is you've given me no reason. Mm -hmm. Here we know that life exists on this universe, yes or no? Well, yeah, we're standing okay. here, Okay, <laughs> we know that the universe facilitated that in terms of its constants and its physical properties, yes or no? Sure, yeah. Okay, fine. Now, where the life exists, how much life exists in terms of quanti quantity, mm -hmm. these are peripheral questions or additional questions or supplementary questions. They don't affect sure. the question at hand, which is, does the universe or is the universe finely tuned for any kind of life to exist? And I'm not, I'm not honing in on human beings and saying that human beings here. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah I'm saying any kind of life, life to does exist. Does the universe allow life to exist? Yes, yes, that's the question. Thank you very much. Now. According to the majority, according to almost, it's almost a consensus in, in science now, yeah? In terms of physics, that physicists, whether they be agnostic, atheistic, or theistic, acknowledge the fine tuning of the universe. Now, Stephen Hawking says this in the brief history of time. Even Richard Dawkins says this. Uh, many different people, obviously, Martin Rees wrote the book Just Six Numbers, many different individuals, they, they make this claim, okay? My point is, when they say this, what they're effectively saying is that the constants in terms of physics are so, ch so finely tuned, had they been otherwise adjusted, the universe would not allow any kind of life to exist. And therefore, me and you couldn't have this conversation. Does this make sense so far? Yeah, if the universe was tuned in such a way that life couldn't exist in it, then life wouldn't exist in it. That's, that's true, but it's also kind of an end in itself. Okay, now, my question is, probabilistically because this was your this was obviously yeah an argument from probability yeah and your from argument proof. from probability yeah. this was your original point yeah. wasn't it so, yeah. so probabilistically now i'm asking you a very simple question what is the probability that the universe could have randomly allowed for human life to or any life to exist uh -huh. so this is like could the room full of monkeys the typewriters eventually write shakespeare thing right no because well no it, it is it's the same argument i mean it's different constituent parts but it's the same core argument uh, so it's, it's the not the, the, the only difference. High. No, no, no. Let me, sorry. let me answer your question. Yes, directly. of course. Sorry. The probability is yes. uh, necessarily yes. high enough for that to occur because if you accept that the universe is more or less infinite, right? No. You don't. Do you think there's an edge? Would well, you think that the universe had, didn't have a beginning? It may or may not have. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Because now you're moving away from the scientific evidences. The, the majority of scientists clearly believe in the Big Bang and clearly believe in the expanding universe model. That is not true. Those are both theories. No, but do you not believe in that? That's, no, that's fine. That's, I'm not saying that you, you, you're compelled. I, I'm just saying, it's fine. I'm just saying, you, you don't have to accept those things. Yeah. Okay, so, so here's the thing. So here's the thing. You asked me if I believe that, like what the probability is that the universe, when just interacting randomly with itself, would produce the conditions That wasn't what I life. said, by the way. No? Okay, so clarify. I said, generally speaking, I didn't say interact and randomly with myself. That wasn't an insertion I made, Max. Okay. I said, generally speaking, the inception of the universe, yeah? Upon the inception, if you obviously believe in an inception or beginning of the universe, which I you're saying you don't. Do. Yeah, which you're saying you don't. Yeah. But well, no, I'm not saying I don't or I do, I'm saying I don't you, know. Okay, fine, that's fair enough. That's, that's a fair enough position. Max, that's a fair enough position. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you're saying, and you wanted to presuppose here for this conversation to continue, that the universe existed for an infinitely uh, long amount of time. Now I'm saying, what's the proof for that? Since you're the one who's asking for proof, generally, I'm also in my right to ask you for your proof. Sure. Uh, we don't have any proof based on carbon dating or any other scientific means that really extends much beyond the borders of this planet and maybe some adjacent ones. Like, as I understand it, we've taken soil samples from Mars, we've taken soil samples from the Moon. And in both of those cases, the soil samples that we took were able to be carbon dated back a certain amount of time. However, we didn't take deep core samples of the Moon or Mars, so we can't rightly say at this point in time whether we know as an absolute truth how old either one of those bodies are. Now keep in mind, we've only good. touched two celestial bodies in our solar system, which is That's a limited good. part of a galaxy, so on and so forth. So uh, obviously, no scientist in their right mind would claim to have absolute knowledge of the beginnings of the universe. All we have are theoretical models. Okay, thank you very much. But you are, are you now presupposing a beginning of the universe? Because what you said, just to summarize what you've said there, is that you don't have any evidences or proof to suggest that the universe was here for an infinite amount of time. That's what you said. I certainly don't have proof. Okay, you don't have proof. So that's the thing. Uh, to be honest with you here, Max, yeah. I have to be honest with you. Yeah? You seem yeah, like a very right. genuine guy. Yeah? Sure. yeah. You seem to be deviating away from the principle that you've laid down for yourself. In the beginning of this conversation, I said to you, what is your, what is your 
standard of truth, what the kind of thing would you accept? Yeah, of course, yes, explore the world. But I was going to say, generally speaking, in the beginning you said that my standard of truth is a probabilistic one. Yes? Based on evidences, you compile the evidences together and come to conclusions based on that evidences, or based on those evidence or that data, or those sets of data, on whether you think something is probable or not probable. Sure. Okay. And then in the same breath, or in a, in, in a later statement, you, are, you said that I don't have any evidences for the fact that the universe was around for, the, for an infinite amount of time. Yeah, so especially this is, if we can find it to me as a person standing here right now, but in a more general sense in terms of what I've learned, we do not have concrete evidence one way or the other. Thank you very much. Okay, so if that's the case, why would you put that as a presupposition? It's very odd. So why would you assume that the universe here existed forever? I did. You said, no, you did. Have. It may have. Okay. There's, a very, there's a very great gap, and we should be precise about this. There's a very great gap between yeah. saying that something is likely or unlikely and saying it's possible, and also another gap over to saying okay. that it's true. Okay. I did not say it was true. No, I, did I know not you didn't say, say it was that. particularly likely That's fine. or unlikely. I said that, it was possible. No, I like that. It's no, possible no. to find spaghetti monsters up there somewhere. So let's just be clear. I'm not saying that so, it's no, 100% no. Do you know what is, can I tell you and the people something right here and right now, yeah? Yeah, that's the purpose of this, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 Max, I need to tell you something. All right. I need to tell you something because, do you know, and this might sound, I want you guys, like, generally to, to really picture what I'm saying. Okay. With, in, with infinity, yeah. literally, almost everything is possible. I'll tell you what I mean by that. That's correct. No, no, you don't have to explain it. I, I understand. No, but I just want just to make sure, like you said, spaghetti yeah. monsters, yeah? Yeah. There is a probability, like, actually, it's not a probability, it's a, it's a, it's 100% the case if that me and you, were infinite. if the universe were infinite, me and you had this conversation before in Pluto and Mars and all of these different planets. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Not on Pluto or Mars. It's yes, no, no, no. There's another universe very like no, us. No, but hold on, hold on. There are people very like us had a conversation very like this. No, 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 no. But it is not possible that Everything is possible. No, 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 this is, this is what I want you to understand. With the, possi- with the existence of infinity, because with it, the inf- look, people don't understand what infinity is. Infinity literally is everything becomes possible, literally. Now, yeah, sure. yes. there's an unending number of iterations of everything. Thank you very you much. I could say yeah. that you know, something very akin to this happened before, sure. No, this happened before in all the planets of the universe. We don't know that because if... No, but uh, that's happened. If, it's po- if everything is possible... Happened. It could happen. It could have happened previously or could happen in the future. It, yes, yes, thank you. That's right, that's correct. Yeah, you so, can't make an absolute statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 fair enough. You no You're right. Infinity. So it's either happened before or it's going to happen in the future. That me and you have this conversation in Pluto and Mars. No, no, but that, I know it sounds ridiculous. It sounds... Yeah, conceptually, it is true. Yes, because all these things... Absolutions, I don't know about that. No, 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 absolutions. We're talking about past and present. Yeah. And future as well, yeah? With the existence of infinity, you've got everything is possible. Mm. You, can you can you conceive this? Because I know it's difficult for people to conceive this. It's not difficult for me to conceive. So don't. No, don't not you. Think not you. Again. No, not you. But just generally, people find that. So how is that possible? We don't understand. But with the existence, infinity is such a concept that almost everything becomes possible. Sure. Like I could be flying yeah. in another universe. All right, all right, you made that point. Thank you. Okay, now, so no, because th- this is important, right? If I say to you that if everything almost everything either has happened or will happen then that would suggest here this is important that for you to say it's possible that the universe was infinite or it's possible this or possible that yeah. in the context of an infinite universe is really neither Just here nor there clear, have you accepted the premise that it is infinite no of course not i've already okay. rejected that right. yeah i've rejected this yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've rejected yes of course my friend yes There's nothing to uh, repeat it's always evolution and there is a progress. Yes. So it's not, not, you cannot have the discussion, what you said, in the past or we're going to have in the future. What, with, the, with the existence of infinity? infinity n- why? Always evolution. But you understand, yeah? Technically, every condition of this being Maybe the same thing. Maybe two million human beings doesn't exist no more. It's having another special. Anyways, but, but thank you very much for your contribution. Is there anything you want to add? <laughs> anything more? Okay. But you understand the argument, the line of argument, yeah? Sure, sure. I would, okay. I would add one point, though. Yes, go ahead, please. If the universe is infinite, yeah. it is possible that this conversation will repeat or has occurred in the past. But this exact one, in this exact point in the universe physically, and also this exact point chronologically, could not reoccur. No, no. Who said that? <laughs> why? Who, who made that? Who made that condition? No, no, no. Tell me the reason why. With the existence of infinity, there's because no... theoretically, even in an infinite universe, you... Ah, oh, you know what? Maybe you could have a repeating point in space. Of course Maybe. you can. Yeah, you definitely will, actually. 
Okay, so this this infinity thing, by the way, which doesn't exist in the real world. Okay. I don't even believe infinity exists in the real world. Infinity doesn't exist in the real world. We don't know that. No, I mean mathematicians have spoken on this. Like Hilberg, you know the Hilberg Hotel example. Uh, go ahead. You know where he said that if you had an if you had a hotel with an infinite amount of rooms mm -hmm. and two people left the hotel, yeah, how many people do you have in a hotel? Infinity minus two. How can you have infinity minus two? That's a contradiction in terms. It is, but if you accept that... Uh... There's no way you can have infinity minus two. That's a contradiction in terms. Right, if two people right, came right. into such a hotel, Hilberg yeah. says, what do you have then? Infinity plus two. Does the hotel have infinite rooms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does everything around the hotel have infinite rooms? It's space? the hotel, yeah. Is there an infinite yeah, yeah. number of people? Yeah, is yeah, there yeah. universe outside the hotel? <laughs> this, is the, this is the presupposition, yeah. So, do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah? This concept of infinity, when you scrutinize it from a philosophical perspective with that example, and a mathematical perspective, it doesn't work. If escaped infinity and then gone back into it, it defeats the fact that the hotel is infinite. You can't exactly. Leave it. Thank you. That's correct. So, it's a contradiction in terms. Yeah, okay. So the concept of infinity as applied in the quantifiable, tangible realm is something which actually cannot exist. It's not that it just doesn't exist. It's something which conceptually, mathematically, philosophically cannot exist. How do you know that? For the examples I've just given you, but it's not my example, it's the mathematician's example. It's Hilberg's example. It's called Hilberg's sure, hotel. Right. There's an assumption in that example, which is that the two people can leave the hotel. Yeah, why right. not? Why shouldn't that be the assumption? Well, because if the hotel is truly infinite, then how would you get out? Well, I mean, that, that, what's, what's this and this? Why, how does that contradict no, that? No, no. So you asked for Why does it have to be? Right? It's not a prison. This it's a hotel. Your, this is your infinite hotel. But it's not. Infinite I didn't hotel. say it's an infinite prison. You have two individuals inside of it. Yeah. The next thing you say is these two individuals leave it. Thereby, the hotel is no longer infinite because there's an edge in the escape. Oh, that is a finite so, hotel. Okay, so that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> so what you've done there is you've, you've correctly identified the contradiction yeah. of dealing with infinity. Yeah. But uh, that, as an example, plus or minus dealing with the uh, infinity. infinity to me. It just means that that example is flawed. Okay, give you can't me. Take it a flawed example but listen, and expand it to encompass the entire universe. And no, that to I, no. What I'm saying is, give me. Okay, so in your case, I'm just going to ask you a question. Let give me a quantifiable example of how infinity has existed in the real world. You can't. That's the beauty of it. No, I mean, sorry. Day, no, sorry. No, you. Like you're just escaping from it. Yeah, you, you just don't want to, like you don't want to accept the truth. Well, like, infinity, the truth. infinity is a concept. So anything you can't understand is beautiful? Is that the... No, no that <laughs> specifically is beautiful. The beauty to me of the infinite universe is that there are infinite possibilities, as you said. And you're trying to use this, although we haven't gotten there yet, to prove the existence of some sort of God, right? So if we jump a little closer I haven't even, I haven't even talked about God. Okay. Well, what's your, what's your angle then? Look, my angle is this. Look, <laughs> Max, I've, I've enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed yeah, yeah. having this conversation with you because you're not just like the normal agnost or atheist that really doesn't know the arguments. You're well aware of the arguments. I'm sure you have a book there that you've been reading. And not about this, but it is a book, yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw something, a scientific name of the book, so I yeah, thought... it is a science book, yeah. Listen, Max. Today, we have laid a basically a basic premise, and we have agreed with that, and this is the beauty of it. I call this beautiful myself, yeah? We said that we both accept that something which has a probabilistic reasoning is something which maybe ought to be accepted. Okay, now, going back, since I said to you, listen, you cannot prove the existence of an infinite universe. It actually contradicts the science of today, for the most part. Like the expanding universe model, it does contradict it. You can't say it doesn't. Because the expanding universe model, where you that there's, there's an expanding universe because of the redshift of the of the stars and whatnot, yeah? Mm -hmm. This indicates that there was a singular beginning. And that's the Big Bang Theory, isn't it? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. It no, indicates it, that things are separating from one another at a quantifiable yeah. rate, but that no. doesn't necessarily prove the existence of a beginning or end. Mm. It just proves the evidence you can see before you, which is that What's there it? is that redshift and there is some separation. But to jump from that and say that that proves the Big Bang Theory is a large leap. No, 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 I'm that's... that's well, well, hold on. No, 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 look, think of it this way. Let me, let me put it like in a scientific example that I'm sure they teach the kids in school, yeah? Yeah. I'm not saying that you're... But like no, this no, is... Yeah, did you get you teach the kids yeah, yeah. in school. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you know when you have the balloon, yeah? Or a balloon. Yeah. And you blow a balloon. Now, if you blow up a balloon, it obviously all the edges of the balloon are touching each other in the first instance, yeah? 
when the balloon is unfilled? Yes, unfilled. No, not all of the edges. I'm sure there are some where they separate by a little bit. Okay, but okay, I'm giving you. I mean, <laughs> for the sake of the example. Okay, okay, okay sure. Oh, come on. Infinitely come on. Balloon. I'm right. giving. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now you blow up the balloon. Yeah. It's very demonstrative. <laughs> Yeah, now you have a balloon. Now you have a balloon. Now, the balloon was expanding, yeah? Uh-huh. If you have an expanding balloon, like that, it means I had one point. from balloons to say the universe has to have this had a big bang in order to be expanding, are you? This is not my argument. This is how they did, this is how they explained to me when I was a boy in school, okay. in this country, my friend. Yeah. I mean, it's how my atheist science teacher explained to me in uh -huh. GCSE okay. science. To tell you the I'm sure you, you, like you were explained in the same, a similar way. They explain, that's how they explain it is the Big Bang model and they explain it, the expanding universe. That's a bad teacher. Okay, 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 okay let, let's, yes. I, don't, I don't want us to get lost in group discussion. Yes, here. yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, so, yes. so. Wow, that guy's popular. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you have the expanding balloon. See, look, yes, look, can I say, can I say something, yeah? Sorry to say this, but some people, they say that the Canadians don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> They're not correct. No, Maybe no, it's no, no. I don't know. But. You've heard this before, yeah? I'm sure, I mean... I've never heard that, but I live in the place, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 some say that. But today, I think you've, you've given us evidence <laughs> that we can put into our probability generator to... Yeah, I would say uh, I would assume some otherwise. evidence in favor of there being humor in Canada, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, go, tell me now. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay, no, no, no doubt here. Sure. So, so, the so Big Bang model... The balloon to make it expand. The balloon had a starting point. Yeah? It had a, a sing singular point. This is the Big Bang Theory. This is the Big Bang, and then it all expanded. That's the Big not Bang the Theory. Big Bang Theory for this one reason. The Big Bang Theory does not in any way mention or try to prove the existence of an external force acting on the beginning of the universe. The furthest that we've really gone. No, no, I'm not that saying that. But I'm not. I'm not. Time. So in your example, Max. there's you standing there blowing into a balloon. And also, there's something outside the balloon. There's the room that you're in. Thank now, you. Now, neither one of those things is part of the Big Bang Theory. There is no Accepted. externality to the universe. Accepted. There is no force acting. No, on. the no externality of the universe is not uh, is not a um, is not something you can say. It's something you can only be agnostic about. Yeah. Because yeah, we're inside the universe. Thank you. Yeah. The whole thing about force, once again, it's only something we can be either agnostic or assured about. But you cannot make it. Assured about it. Well, if you have, what I'm going to say right now evidences or your, your probability reasoning suggests that listen going back to the fine tuning that couldn't be that this fine tune or this finely tuned universe is a result of a random generation why not okay tell me now what's the probability of it being the case what is let me ask a direct question what is the probability now that we've gotten rid of infinity what is the probability that the universe could have come about out of a finely uh, as finely tuned as it is in terms of physical constants, without the existence of an intelligence, randomly. Tell me the answer. I suppose it depends on your your model a little bit, right? Because yeah. we can talk about one of two things, like what percentage of the universe is habitable, or what is the probability that all but of we the had this discussion parts before, of the Max. universe interacting could Max, result in the conditions for life. Max, we had this discussion before. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So let's not go back, because we said already, so long as any part of the universe has life in it, then we can then we firmly... The whole thing is quote-unquote finely tuned for life. Thank you. Well, I mean, I have a little trouble with that language because, I mean, finely tuned, like... Well, that's the language the atheists right. use. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, to answer your question in the way that you want me to... No, I don't want you. Just the way you want <laughs> okay, to. Okay, okay. But also the truth. It's yes. very small. It very took small. an incredibly long time for the conditions for life to arise. Would it be 1% or less so long, than 1%? Oh, far less than 1%. Far less than 1%. Yeah. So, okay, now please, 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 please. Max... Here we here is the here is the crossroads. We're standing at the junction, Max. Right, okay. No, seriously. No, no. It's, it's the, this is it. And for all the atheists that are watching this, please ponder. Okay. Please ponder. You started off by saying that your method of conceptualizing truth and false is a probabilistic method. I have just asked you what is the possibility of the universe coming about random. Pardon? Do you always need to review this much for your audience? It's always good to. <laughs> what is the probability that the universe came about randomly without an intelligence and you said far less than 1%, okay. which would suggest that... May I, may I ask oh, you a wait, let me just, turn? Yes, of course. Let me just finish that. Yes. Right. That would suggest that over 99, probably 0.9 recurring percent of the probability is in line 
with the idea that there's an intelligent force. No, 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 no. Okay, now tell me. Massive logically, dude. You can't no, do it's that. not. Now no, tell me. No, no, hold on. Because the question <laughs> I asked you, hold on, Max. The question I asked you yeah. is that if we're assuming there is no intelligence, what's the probability? And it's all random. You said less than one percent. So that would suggest that if there is an intelligence, that is zero point whatever one percent or ninety nine point nine percent. The case. Do you get it? It makes perfect sense. Now tell me why it's a logic, logical leap. So if something is 1%, that was, it has to be 99 and then it spreads out from that last 5%, you work out that one. I like this. Good. Yeah. Nice contribution. Yeah. Okay. What's your name, brother? Now, here's how I dismantle your theory. We are standing in the universe where the conditions for life arose. Yeah. So there may be a probabilistic argument to be made that there might have been uh, you know, an intelligent designer that created the conditions for life, maybe. But we are standing in one in which they did evolve randomly. So now you're talking about the anthropic principle, yeah? Sure. Okay, do you know, even, to be honest with you, yeah, even Richard Dawkins, uh, what, you can go online and check Richard Dawkins, yeah? Actually, I don't, I'm sorry, I, I'll take that back. <laughs> don't check him out, but check him out on this issue, yeah? Write Richard Dawkins, oh, Anthropic check all Principle. all good. <laughs> Richard Dawkins, Anthropic Principle, yeah? He himself, he's not in favor of a strong Anthropic Principle. He said that the idea that you can make the argument that you've just made here, Philosophically, and he's not really a philo philosopher, really. It's a weak one. Why? And this is the old-fashioned example, yeah, of someone, let's say, for example, a group of people, a group of police officers, they run after you because maybe you've been a bad guy in Canada or something like that, yeah? You've been a serial killer, and, and they put you up against the wall. And then they all shoot you like this with a gun. All of them are shooting at you, maybe at one feet distance. All of them are shooting at you, yeah? And then at the end of it, you, you, you close your eyes and then you open your eyes, Max. And you look behind you, Max, and you realize that all the bullets literally were around the body, your body, like that. And you say, look, man, you say, you say the reason why the bullets didn't hit me is because the bullets didn't hit me. And therefore, the fact that I'm here is proof that the bullets didn't hit me. This is the example of a cyclical argument. It's so yeah. weak that even your main, I'm not saying yours, but atheistic proponents don't even make this argument. It's so weak that you should literally put it into the philosophical dustbin. You know the philosophical <laughs> dustbin. You open up, say, listen, man, this argument, throw it, chuck it in there. Yeah, yeah, fair. I guess, I guess one idea. Yeah. I want your answer for this. Thank you for that contribution. Yes. My answer to what? Whether or not we should. No, 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 no. We're, we're using probability. Okay. We are using right, probability. Right, right. So You've used the no, anthropic no, principle. We put it into the dustbin. Now, what are we going to do? You said that I could ask you a question in return. Of course. Of course, Max. All right. Of course. So, in an evidence based fashion, yeah. what is the probability that this universe has been created by something external to it? And how can you possibly know that as someone from within the universe? Because, as you acknowledged yourself earlier on, if you're inside the universe, you can have no knowledge of anything outside of it. So, how is it that you no. assume knowledge? There is an intelligent creator. Say, say, that, say the question, make the question so, clear so again. You, so go yeah, on. Because these are two questions, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Let me just make sure. Sorry. You stated that as uh, a being existing inside the universe, yes. you can have no knowledge of anything outside of it. No knowledge. No, you did. Yeah, you can, you can have no knowledge. You, yeah. well, if you're inside the so you're room, saying, you can't know about the room, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. If we're yeah, inside the universe, we so can't yeah. know about anything. You can have, no, you can have limited knowledge using empiricism. So I understand your problem with the facts. Can I just make one qualification? You can have limited knowledge using empiricism because we're not able to perform the scientific method outside the universe because we're just simply not there. But I would maintain that using logical methods of deduction, induction, abduction, you can come to conclusions about that which is outside of the universe. Just to be clear. Go ahead. I don't know that I fully accept that. But Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah, because we're within the universe, right? So Yeah, so what? What does that show? What is that? Who cares? So we can theorize about things outside of it, but coming to conclusions about things outside of it is a bit presumptuous, don't you think? No. I think that based on the evidences of what's inside, mm -hmm. you can make conclusions and deductions okay. about that which must be outside. Okay. Well, I'll admit this. I haven't eaten since breakfast, and I did make a mistake there. I allowed you to trap me in the probabilistic argument, so kudos for that. But I will now ask you my question. What evidence do you have to support the existence of your God that doesn't come from a tome 
something written down by other human beings. What evidence do you have? I have not spoken about any book. I know, I know. But you have a belief system that comes from somewhere, and I can fairly confidently assert that you didn't just generate it yourself. Would that be fair to say? I would say, listen. Because if would, so, you're committing to being part of a belief system that no one else here is. Listen, I, I'm just saying, you, 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 told, you told me here now, something about a book or something, yeah? I've not mentioned one religion, nor Christianity or Islam okay. or Judaism uh, yeah, or just Hinduism. Just, just the probability of intelligent design, right? That's where you're driving. I'm just talking about. I'm just talking about some oh, okay. physical realities. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know why you've made that point, that red herring, or that straw man argument. And as you've mentioned oh, before, a straw man. of course it's a straw man. Oh, Do you know what a straw man is? A okay, a straw man is when so you cannot. Comparison. Okay, you've admitted, and I'm sorry to put you in the spot like this, but you've admitted yeah. that you that I trapped you in the probabilistic argument. Yeah. yeah. But why, is, why should it be a trap? Why don't you just accept the conclusions that we've so, reached? Guess, so here's something that I did say, and it is on the record. So yes, go back and check if you like. Go on, Max. I said that in reality, my belief system is based on two things. Probability and evidence. Sorry, so, do you mind if I answer this con? Uh, yeah, oh, we, I do, do actually. Because <laughs> this guy's been no, cool. I mind. Okay, okay. All right. So, sorry, sorry, Max. Uh, <laughs> well, it's all right, man. But if you want to do this and put me in front of your camera, no, no, then no. you've got to stay on message. You're right, you're right. You're right, you're right. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right, you're right. So, um, probability and evidence, right? So you're right, that it is incredibly unlikely that the conditions for life would arise, yeah. and yet they seem to. And you can make an argument that that might be seen as, as evidence for the possibility of an external force acting, right? That's what I've just done. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand that. Yeah. But, uh, let me ask you this then. Yes, sir. You believe in some force that is active externally on our universe to create life, do you? If some not, force? Yeah, a force. That is what? You believe in a force that acted external from us onto our universe to create life, right? That's correct. Yeah, you do. Um, okay, so do you think that force is sort of an ethereal, all-encompassing force, or is it more specific? Does it have more concern with, say, the inhabitants of Earth and the inhabitants of other planets? Well, these issues to do with my philosophical preferences have nothing to do with the existence or non-existence of the force. So if you're right. saying, do I believe in the force, we have, to pre we have to presuppose the existence of the force. So before we talk about what I believe the force is interaction... Well, that's necessarily true. I no, mean, but I Max, one thing at a time. Concretely doesn't exist. Ma Max, one thing at a time. Yeah. If, you're, if you are happy to continue, assuming that there is a force, then I'll continue telling you about the qualities of the force and the logical reason why these qualities must exist within the force. But if you don't accept the force, then it's talking about something which does not exist. Yeah. So here, my question to you is, based on the evidences that we've looked at, based on mathematical models and probability theory and all these different things that we've talked about today, based on your own standards of truth, will you now accept that it's more probable than not that there was an intelligence be behind the creation of the universe? No, no I don't think know. that I would. <laughs> Pardon? No, I don't think that I would. Okay, because now that, that is a contradiction. A where, you know, you could look at the universe as basically like a, a sandbox full of marbles, right? Like one of those things you can kind of shake and agitate the marbles. And from what we know about the combinations of chemicals that can form into molecules from component atoms, or even smaller down to like quarks and those sorts of things, right? They're really ultra tiny components of the physical world. Random interaction in a theoretically infinite, but even if it's not infinite, a very vast universe will produce chemical reactions just by atoms colliding over time, right? Do you accept that? Say that. It's, it's, so, say yeah, sorry, those guys are loud. <laughs> so, um, do you accept that in a, even a, a very large universe, let's put infinity aside for a second because that seems to be a contentious issue. But when you talk about, are you talking about time? Large in terms of quantifiable space or time or both or what? Uh, let's say both. both okay, no problem. Because we do live in a very big universe, I mean. Yeah, so it's just, very, let's say it's just yeah. very big and not infinite, just yeah. for the sake of time. Okay, okay. And that it contains a very large number of component parts, right? And they all interact randomly. And so over time, many meaningless interactions occur, the kind that just turn into a little bit of heat or a little bit of light, or just don't do anything at all. Two atoms collide and they go boink because they're not chemically compatible, right? But over time, some of them will combine into more complex molecules. Now those molecules will fly around randomly, and again, the great majority of those collisions are going to result in nothing. But some of them will result in something, and through that increasing complexity over time, you could arrive at the necessary conditions for life without an intelligent external force no, acting on the universe. No, that's not what I'm talking so can about. I just say, well, like, yes. You've actually inserted a law by doing that. You know what you said, when, when they combine and some of them react? Yeah. How do you know this is light? How do you know this is heat? How do you know when they combine? You've actually inserted laws. So what you're trying sure. to do yeah, is... Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I can answer that. I can answer yeah, that. Right. So there's, there's the, laws that I have, the laws that I've inserted into my argument are ones that are based on the body of scientific research that you've done so far. So like I said earlier, I cannot tell you with 100% certainty that when you apply ink to a letter and press it into this page, it's going to make a letter. It's very likely 
and it's a reliable business. I would have no problem starting up a printing press tomorrow and making books, because I'm pretty damn certain that every time I try to make a book, I would come up with a book. Yeah. But it is possible that every once in a while it's going to explode, and I can't tell you with 100% certainty that it's not. So those physical laws that I'm talking about are physical laws that are very well supported by all kinds of things. Like most of us have a smartphone in our pocket. Its operations are based on our understanding of the physical laws. Do they sometimes go wrong? Do we have battery fires? Yes, but most of the times the batteries just charge and release energy as they're designed to. So, so I, don't, right. I did insert yeah, some physical yeah, laws, yes. but they're very well supported. And by all means, if you can but just where did the law, who is the law or the availability no, 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 of to, carbon to bond with the oxygen, the then, then we, do it. The only thing you really want to do is say that these laws are not random. Where did the laws come from? That's, what I'm That's a good question. Because where did the laws actually come yeah. from? Did the we laws? Yeah, yeah, where did the laws come from? Yeah, where did the laws come from? We don't we have absolute, absolute knowledge of where they came we, from. We, we, we but, him answer, please. Presumptuous. So I didn't hear what you said because of the right. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, you guys, if you want to debate, you got to do it off camera or later. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to hear what you have to say. I, I do. But. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so the uh, laws based on experimentation. Where did they come from? We don't know, but we don't know one way or the other. Like both okay. sides of this debate are in the dark, as far as that's concerned. You can't say with certainty it was an intelligent designer. I'm saying I can't that. I can say with certainty. No, you can't say. I want to be clear. It's very likely that wasn't the case, but I cannot say with 100% Max. certainty. What? Max. Oh, this. <laughs> yeah, Max. No. 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 Let me tell you maybe. something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Philosophically. Yeah. You, let me tell you something. Philosophically, there is nothing in the whole of philosophy which you can say is a incorrigible completely which means you know what incorrigible means number two that you could say could be said absolutely certainty with certainty yeah okay it's all based on likelihood thank you yeah. This is now why. Back to the probability this is right? why. Thank everything, you. Everything is probability. Everything is probability. <laughs> now, sure. that is why everything is faith. That's the thing is about atheists and agnostics is that pre they presuppose that religious people are the only ones who have faith, so they, they can make themselves feel good about themselves, self-aggrandize in a narcissistic type way, pointing the finger of blame at the backward. Right, I'm not saying right. that's what you do. Yeah, sure. But the backward religious I said type. I agnostic earlier, so you remember that. Point. Not you, not you. I'm not yeah, making this point. Those other but because the, those other atheists that say, look, you guys believe in the fairy tales of the old and you have no evidences and you have faith and blind faith like that. This is a disingenuous philosophical position. Everyone has some kind of faith. We base the faith on probabilistic type reasoning. Yeah. Today I've shown you, and you've come to a conclusion almost, but I don't know why you're not admitting it. The reason is this. That the universe There's is probabilistically no more likely to come from an intelligence than not. been run so far, and you know, again, open to being proved wrong. There's no experiment that's been run so far that yes, has proved in any way the acting of a cosmic force upon everything on Earth. This is not the condition you set for us. No, Let me hold on. Oh, sorry, you have not said in the beginning of this discussion that your standard is a scientific empirical standard. Yeah. You have not said that. Even that's a weaker standard, the probabilistic standard. Because if you use that standard, you can't even prove the existence of mathematics. Do you feel confident getting on a bus that it's going to roll forward when the driver presses on the gas pedal? Listen, this is what you're saying here has nothing to do with what I'm saying. No, I'm no, saying a lot to do no, 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 hold on. I'm saying that you have said in the beginning of this discussion. Uh, it's a probabilistic argument, and I congratulated you on trapping no. me. You know? yeah. No, no, no problem. I'm not trying to trap you, Max. I'm just trying to show you that. You are. For your audience's sake, you are. Listen, if that's how it's spade is spade. Okay, look. This is about you demonstrating to your audience that theism is a more concretely demonstrable reality than atheism. I think not. that's I think that's part of it. But you know what? I'm part of it. Yeah, definitely. Come on, that's why you're here. Probably that's that's the that's majority the of the reason. Of why that's you're the bulk. Here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I take that. I take that. <laughs> okay. I'll not only right. to demonstrate to the audience, but to the, the interlocutor as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So here, I'm saying to you. It seems like you. You call, you call it a trap, but I don't know why you call it, why are you, why are you calling it a trap? Well, because it was a well-constructed argument and I didn't think before I spoke and therefore you got me into a position where I had to admit that you know the intelligent design was low. Max. But I don't accept that as adequate proof of the existence of a designer. Fine, I will leave it at that. You know why I will leave it as that? What's that? Because I personally believe you have contradicted your own true standard. You've almost said that there's 99% possibility, 99.9 .9 recurring percent of possibility, sure. that the universe came out not as a result of randomness, which would necessitate non-randomness which would necessitate right. a force the very nature of probability everything that has uh, a representative number tied to it right like every chance could occur right so by your own model although well, it's if, if you have the existence of infinity only 
which we talked about before. We don't want to go around in the circles. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay, okay. Max. So, so yeah. Do you want to keep? I did say no. I did okay. say that it's less yes. than uh, a one percent chance, right? Yeah. But what you need to do in order for this to be a, a very concretely convincing presentation and not just like a semi-weak one is you need to then follow up on that and say, and this is why I know that we are not living in the percentile where this did occur randomly. Because so far, all you've done is prove that both are possible, and I accept that. I mean, I've well, well, no, no, I haven't. I haven't showed you that. I've showed you that the universe has a 99.9 .9 recurring per percent chance of not coming about randomly, which would necessitate that it has to have come about non-randomly, which would necessitate a organized force. And you're saying that you don't want to believe that. So this is personally, I personally believe, is intellectual dishonesty. Because that was your own standard. Yeah. But, and that's why you call it a trap. But why call it a trap? It's not a trap. You can, you're you know, in a I trap. I think I did actually. Let's back up a step. Believe that much. 99% is not easy number. Oh, hang what on. What makes you believe that? Oh, hang on, hang on. One sec. I realized I made a mistake. Okay. <laughs> in an infinite universe. Ah, fine. No, I'm fine. Fuck it. You want to end this thing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Max. I think the best thing to do is me and you have a conversation off cameras because I think there's a feeling that. Um, we're doing it for the sake of the audience, so we'll do it maybe... Well, let me, let me just dismantle that really quick. Yeah. You wouldn't have a bunch of cameras if you weren't doing it for the sake of an audience. So I'm, doing not, it, I'm, doing it for the, no, I'm doing it for the sake of an audience. Yeah. I want the audience to be acquainted with the arguments, and I want an interlocutor mm -hmm. to provide the devil's advocate position, and you've done a good job in doing that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm saying that if you want to do it afterwards as well, we can do it afterwards as well. I that. may. All right, we'll talk about it. You're invited to dinner. We're going to break our fast after.